Welcome to part four of Art Smart Improv at Home. I'm Addison. And I'm Whitney. And we're going to be showing you some more fun improv. A uh, reminder, if you've not seen our other videos, you can check them out also online on the magical world of YouTube. So make sure you check those out to learn the basics. And then come back, join us here. Um, so you guys have done a lot in the last three videos. We've done warm-ups, we've talked about yes and, and we've done some scene work. So we're going to keep on going and really work on those scenes work on that yes and, mm -hmm. and uh, really, you know, hone in that scene work so you guys can do improv scenes at home and elsewhere. Hopefully, you know, you'll be able to do them for friends and family on a stage one day. Who knows? But today we're going to start off with, of course, a warm-up. I've mentioned before I'm a big fan of just a quick warm-up just to get words going, get you comfortable with whoever your scene partner is. It kind of also allows you to just be silly around each other just to make you feel comfortable saying whatever <laughs> words are happen, they happen, and they're great, and your scene partner is going to support you. So we're going to go back and do the game Seven Things. Um, so again, you can check that out. I believe we did that in the first video, but we're going to do it here again and explain it and uh, do some more examples. It's always good to watch improv, too. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about that a lot. If you can look up other improv to see improv sets online, um, it really helps you get better at improv to watch improv. So uh, we're going to do another example of seven things. So again, how this works, uh, Whitney's going to give me a category. I'm going to name seven things within that category. But if I cannot think of seven things in that category, that's okay. Whatever word I say, Whitney's going to support me and she's going to count off and be like, yep, that word is correct. It doesn't make sense, but it does for this because we support each other and everything makes sense in improv. So, Whitney, what is my category? Tell me seven things that you can do with your cat. Snuggle. One. Uh, pet her. Two. Uh, clean her litter box. <laughs> Three. Uh, give her food. Four. Fill up her water dish. Five. Um, play with her mouse. Six. Take her on a walk. Seven. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right, uh, Whitney. Yes. I would like to know seven things you can do with a rubber band. Uh, stretch it. One. Break it. Two. Put it around bananas. Three. Use it as a hair tie. Four. Make a rubber band ball. Five. Uh, hold envelopes together. Six. Uh, hit someone with it. Seven! <laughs> Yay! So again, that is seven things. We're gonna pause the video now, or you can pause the video now, and give that one a try. All right, and we're back. Uh, I hope you had fun doing seven things. We're now going to go back to the big principle of yes and. We've talked about that in our other videos. It's such a big pillar of improv. So we're going to, again, do some yes and conversations, really just to grind this idea in of yes and. So Whitney and I are going to have a conversation. We're going to just use the filter yes and in between our statements and uh, keep it moving that way. Um, the thing I like to do when you're first starting out with improv too is for this um we're going to try to not ask any questions we're mm -hmm. going to try to just have statements um first starting out in improv it can be kind of a crutch to you know ask a question because you put uh the creativity part on your scene mate you know if you say oh where are we going then they have to decide where you're going um since it's improv you can answer that question yourself most questions like that you know instead of saying where are you going say oh I'm so excited we're going to the beach and then you know you've given information that is something that you're scene mate can add information too. Um, so Whitney, do you want to start the statement and we'll go back and forth? Sure. I think we should watch movies all day. Yes, and I just bought on Blu-ray the entire series of Blue's Clues. Yes! And do you know that Magenta is my favorite character? <gasps> yes, and you know what? I think you should go as Magenta for Halloween. Yes, and you should be Mrs. Salt. <gasps> yes, and our cats can be Paprika and the Mailbox. <laughs> yes, and we can keep on the whole like Nickelodeon theme. Yes. And we can have our best friend Stacy dress up like <gasps> Dora. Yes, and you know what? She's had a crush on that guy whose name actually happens to be Diego. Oh! So this is a really good, like, in to get them together, you know? Ah, she needs a Diego for her Dora. Yes, and she can finally stop just hoping she'll meet someone. Yeah, she can finally just tell Diego how she feels. No more swiper swiping. No more swiper swiping, yes. No more swiper swiping on those apps. <laughs> no more. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, and they're going to have the best life together. And see. <laughs> So that was another yes and conversation. So, again, you know, that was a scene. Uh, we just yeah. used yes and to really get us started. There was a few times we didn't fully say the words yes and, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it still worked. Um, another thing that you can do is I've had some people who do yes because. So if yes and doesn't feel natural in the moment for a scene, you can say yes because. So you're still, you know, agreeing and adding information that way. So we're going to pause now and you can try another yes and conversation. And remember not to ask questions. Um, oh, wait. And before we pause again, if you do ask a question, that's okay. It's totally fine. You guys are just learning improv. Um, feel free to just take a minute and figure out what the answer is. You can, you know, kind of pause the scene and be like, oh, well, I asked what are you doing? Uh, how about I decide what we're doing? And then just decide. Remember that any answer you have is correct and wonderful. So whatever you choose is great and your scene partner will agree with it and add information. Okay, now pause. And we're back. All right. So you guys have done some yes and conversations for warming up. So we're going to move on to a scene game now. Um, this is called Hitchhiker. Um, this is what we call a peas in a pod scene. So we're going to be two different characters, but very similar characters. And you'll see how that works once we do the example. Um, to start this off, Whitney is in a car. She is driving. Um, and I'm going to be a passenger that gets into her car. So I'm going to be the first person to say words. I'll physically get into the car. You'll see it happen. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a strong character choice. Uh, I'm going to, you know, have um, an emotional point of view and a manner of talking that will kind of establish that character. And then Whitney's going to respond to me in the same energy and tone of voice. So again, we're not the same character, but we're the same type of character. And we are going to have a scene in the car um, as these peas in a pod. Um, for this one, too, I still suggest trying not to ask questions, um, especially where are we going. It's, you know, pretty <laughs> instinctive when you are in a car together. But um, another tip for that is decide that you're people that know each other. Um, you can decide that, right? So whoever you are, you guys know each other and you'll make it make sense and it'll be great. So here we go. <sighs> Man, I just, you know, picking flowers is like really hard. Oh. I know, especially during allergy season. I know. It's like, you know, you pick these flowers and they're so beautiful and then they just like attack you with their pollen, you know? I know. And you just want to decorate with them, put them all over the house, make it look nice and springtime inside and you just, you have itchy eyes and a runny nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, you think, Oh, it'll be fine. You know, I'll just bring them in the house and wipe them off. But then you wipe them off and they just, they die. If you wipe them off, they need the pollen. Yeah, they need the pollen. Mm -hmm. They need the pollen and, you know, those Clorox wipes. They just, they kill everything. They kill everything, you know. They're great for wiping off your counter, but, like, don't, you can't use them on vegetation. <sighs> you know what you could try? Hmm. Fake flowers. Fake flowers? Yes. You know, made out of silk or, uh, you know, whatever whatever the fake flowers are made out of. The, the, that synthetic material. So they wouldn't have pollen? They would not have pollen and they'd, they would be just as beautiful. Can you drive me to Joanne's? Absolutely. I can turn this car right around. Let me just... And scene. <laughs> All right. So let's unpack that scene a little, right? So I came in with a statement instead of asking where we're mm -hmm. going. Um, and we, you know, got on the topic of flowers. We didn't really establish exactly who we are to each other, but mm -hmm. that's okay. Uh, we probably would have figured it out soon. Um, you'll probably notice we did ask a few questions, right? Yeah. You're probably like, no, you said don't ask questions. Um, however, like Whitney asked me, you know what you could do? She clearly had more to that. Mm -hmm. She gave me information. She kept the scene moving. She didn't say, oh, what are you going to do? You know, yeah. she gave me information that I can add to and agree to and be like, oh, yes, fake flowers. That's not something I had thought of. Um, as well as I said, can you drive me to Joanne's? Mm -hmm. 
um, you know, I gave a specific place, you know, I didn't say, oh, well, where do we get those? I yeah. made the choice and I said where we're going to go. So sometimes questions can have information that's really useful, generally like a yes or no question. If you ever get a question that is a yes or no, I highly recommend just saying yes, right? Do that yes and and you'll have a fun scene. So we're going to do it one more time. So you have another example. This time I'll be the driver and Whitney will be the passenger so you can see another example. All right, let's go pick up Bootsy from the vet. Okay. Oh my gosh, his first time at the vet. I oh. know. Getting his little, you know. His little checkup. His little checkup mm -hmm. and all of his booster shots. All, all of those booster shots. Oh. Oh. oh, I hope he was nice to the other dogs. I've been so worried about him all day. I know. You know, he's not left our side since we adopted I him know. three weeks ago. I know. Maybe, maybe we're overprotective pet, pet parents. Maybe we should just, you know, let him stay at the vet a little bit longer. No, no, we gotta go get him. I can see that you have the instinct to get him. I we're do. gonna get him. I do. I've wanted to get him as soon as we mm -hmm. dropped him off. We did have the vet call us as well and say, please pick up your pet. That's true. So we should yes. probably We should. We do should. That. They do close at five. We should yeah. go. We should go get Bootsy. Yeah. But, you know, maybe it's time to take him to a dog park, meet some other dogs, let him explore his friendships outside of us. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And he should have friends of his own species. He yeah. should. He can't only be around people. Yeah. He needs to, you know, meet some dogs, learn to wag his tail, mm -hmm. to sniff garbage. And we can't teach that to we him. We can't. You know? We can't. Oh, no, I'm so sad. I feel like he's had no one to talk to since we adopted him. We yeah. just kind of talk at him. We do. But you know what? We love him and he knows that. He does. Mm -hmm. He has to. He does. I give him so many treats. We he tell has him to know. how much we love him all the time and kiss him right on the mouth. Right on it. We and just take his little face and we just kiss him right on the mouth. I don't even care that he was in the litter box last week. I just I just take his little face and mm -hmm. I kiss him right on the, right on the yeah. little muzzle. Because that's just how you have to show a dog love. It is. Mm -hmm. let's, let's go get let's our dog. Let's go get him. And see. <laughs> All right. So let's unpack that one. Hey. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, we were... Probably, I would say we were maybe like a couple, yeah. with like, um, you know, using a pet as our baby, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which is like kind of everyone, right? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Uh, pets point. are great. We're big fans. Um, so we were like a couple going to get our dog from the vet um, overly attached. We had that same energy and attitude, like, oh, our dog, it's everything mm -hmm. we live for. So we agreed with that. Um, I did say no at one point. I'll call it out, right? <laughs> so, um, Whitney mentioned maybe we should leave him at the vet, and I said no. Um, but I tried to turn that around, right? So yeah. I agreed with, I agreed with the principle of, like, we need to go, we need to give him more space. He needs to meet other dogs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's hard is also what, you know, we're gonna say there. Sometimes, you know, um, saying yes, you have to be creative with how you do it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And also, so I guess what I'll say, too, is with these scenes, as you can see, neither one of our scenes was very, like, road-focused is a good thing to think about. Like, a lot of times when we do this exercise, people want to make it all about, like, driving the car. Mm -hmm. And that's not really the point so much as it is just to establish who's creating the character and just to give you the space of being within a car. But, you know, it doesn't have to be like, oh, we're going on a road trip. You know, we made these much more about our relationship mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, and how we how we felt. So um, make sure you have that emotional point of view when you get in the car and have fun. So we're going to pause the video now and you can try out Hitchhiker. All right, we're back. I hope you had so much fun doing Hitchhiker. Um, this is the end of our video for today. Uh, we're going to be back next week with some more improv exercises for you. Uh, but for now, have a great week and keep on improving. Bye!